Those 10 Russian spies are gone, but the whole episode leaves behind a series of head-scratching questions. To help me through some of them is Eric O'Neill, former FBI undercover operative who helped capture Russian spy Robert Hansen. Welcome. Thank you, John. Uh, there seem to be a lot of unanswered questions in, in this whole episode. So what strikes you, what stands out for you in terms of what's missing? What, what part of the story is, are we not hearing? Well, one thing we can't do is read the complaint and think we have the whole picture. We've just got a snapshot of it. Think of it as the tip of the iceberg. What's most interesting is what the FBI hasn't included because it's either classified or protected or ways and means that our counterintelligence doesn't want the other side to know. So I'd love to see what the rest of their case is. And I'd be interested to see if maybe they had some time to debrief these spies before this swap happened, which was pretty fast. We could have learned some more about what, what they were doing. So what do you want to know? Uh, who they contacted, wh whether they were successful, what kind of questions do you want to answer? A absolutely. I want to know who they talked to, who they contacted, who were the Americans that they were supposed to meet with, recruit, and get what we're calling policy information from. What was that policy information? There's, there's got to be more to this story. The Russians didn't take a uh, risk, a political risk, to, to embed these people here for that many years and the expense of training them just to get information that you could perhaps find on Google. <laughs> and, and they watched them for a good long time here. So um, what's that like? Just tell us, having been through this, I mean, to watch somebody uh, for that period of time, uh, just let us in on a little bit on what that process is like. Absolutely. You learn, you learn a lot about a person uh, from the inside out. You learn those little intricacies that, uh, that people try to hide from the general public. Those, if, you, if you imagine what you might do in the privacy of your own house when no one else is around, and it might be a little embarrassing if, if the FBI, for example, were watching. Uh, so you have to, to take surveillance with a grain of salt. You have to give the person the benefit of the doubt. You have to um, be somewhat ethical and careful about, about watching people. But um, there is sometimes a shock factor, especially when you hear two people who end up being spies talking about what they're doing. Do you um, develop sort of shorthands? I mean, this is a long time watching, and in your case, you know, uh, a kind of shorthand way of referring to the subject um, that you've sort of become quite familiar with them, one one sided as the relationship may be. A absolutely. And, and you can have conversations which can be somewhat joking, but at the same time, you have to be careful about the fact that you're looking at someone's life, and you're looking at someone's life in a very clandestine way that uh, is unfair in a way that it's one-sided. Now here, of course, they're spies, and so uh, they got what they deserved, but, um, but it, is, it is difficult to put yourself in the mind of a watcher. And this is, American people should basically recognize that there are other probably spies out there, the Russian spies, even though relations have warmed a little bit, the Cold War is over. There are probably other operations like this going on. Is, would that be a safe thing for people to assume? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and we should have always assumed it. I, I love how um, so many people are talking about, hey, this is just the Cold War. It, the Cold War it might have ended, but spying has always existed, and it always will. It's the best way for a country to collect Im information about another country. And, you know, one, one, great, one great comment is, uh, while countries might politically be friendly, intelligence services are never friends. <laughs> and in terms of the, the operatives who did all of this watching, as you mentioned, this, this swap happened pretty quickly. How does it feel if you spent all of this time watching somebody gathering little tiny bits of evidence to then suddenly have, the, have them whisked away, handed over, the trade happens? Is there sort of a disappointment that happens? Yeah, I think for the counterintelligence agents who, who worked and made this case and spent 10 years um, in, in some cases, following these people, watching them, and doing an amazing job of collecting evidence for 10 years without these people knowing they were there. That's extraordinary. And then to see them disappear within 11 days out of reach without getting that chance to debrief to find out all the rest of the story, I, I really want to know what else they collected because there's got to be more to this. All right. Thanks so much. You're very welcome.